संजीव कवर वॉज अ मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर यारा साउथ एशिया वेलकम सर आई ऑल्सो एक्सटेंड अ वेरी वॉर्म एंड हार्टी वेलकम टू ऑल द गेस्ट टू अजॉइनिंग अस लाइव ऑन फेसबुक एंड यूट्यूब टुडे इट मार्क्स अ सिग्निफिकेंट स्टेप फॉरवर्ड इन अ कमिटमेंट टू रेवोल्यूशनाइज एग्रीकल्चर एंड योर प्रेजेंस एट्स अ ग्रेट वैल्यू टू दिस मोमेंटस ओकेजन विद दिस I would like to invite JP Mohanty who's a digital incubation lead Yara India to come forward and deliver the opening remarks. Thank you Vinisha. Uh, really really excited today. Good morning everyone for joining this uh, you know uh, on 4th of March. Uh, so uh, I think it's been an incredible journey so I joined in Yara in 4 years back in 2019. So I remember in my day one when uh, we just figured out what product to launch how to do and uh, on my first day I think the first week I remember I went to the field and we tried to do not many uh, research to understand how we can work with farmers and what what type of digital solution can we do. So it's been a like 4 years uh, incredible journey. So I think I have uh, one video made for uh, us to show that you know uh, what has been done for the last four years. It's journey point of view. So let me play that. That will give a better uh, you know understanding. In case we suddenly digitalization, our sector may have made लेकिन भारतीय कृषि सेक्टर इसमें पीछे छूट रहा था छोटे किसान अक्सर संसाधनों और जानकारी की कमी का सामना करते थे और ऐसे में कृषि क्षेत्र में डिजिटल क्रांति की जरूरत थी ताकि डिजिटल शक्ति का उपयोग करके छोटे किसान संसाधनों और जानकारी से अधिक मुनाफा कमा सके डिजिटल की ताकत से हम किसानों को स्मार्ट खेती और नई तकनीक तक उन्हें बेहतर निर्णय लेने में मदद मिल सके इस दिशा में ग्यारह डिजिटल लीग दो हजार उन्नीस में आप के लॉन्च के माध्यम से अपनी पहली यात्रा शुरू की और इसे 2021 में नई और बेहतर सुविधाओं के साथ फार्म गो में रिकॉर्ड किया गया इस ऐप के माध्यम से किसान स्थानीय मौसम की जानकारी प्राप्त करते थे और अपनी खेती से संबंधित महत्वपूर्ण और सूचित निर्णय लेते थे किसान अपने संबंधित क्षेत्रों के लिए छह घंटे तीन दिन और चौदह दिनों तक स्थानीय मौसम की भविष्यवाणी देखते थे ज्यादा डिजिटल की कोशिशें नहीं नहीं रुकी पैदावार में सुधार कम लागत में ज्यादा उत्पाद और कृषि इकोसिस्टम के भीतर कनेक्टिविटी में सुधार करने के इलाकों से इस ऐप में साप्ताहिक वीडियो न्यूज फीड जुगाड़ जैसी विशेषताएं थी इस ऐप को हाल ही में फेस लिफ्ट किया गया है और नए और सुधारित विशेषताओं जैसे मैप माई फार्म डी स्टोर लोकेटर और उर्वरक कैलकुलेटर के साथ लॉन्च किया जा रहा है ताकि किसान की दैनिक आवश्यकताओं को पूरा किया जा सके इसके साथ ही ज्यादा डिजिटल में मौजूद रिटेलर्स भाइयों के लिए ज्यादा कनेक्ट भी है जो इन्वेंट्री ट्रैकिंग लेन देन और किसानों से जुड़ने में मदद करता है वर्ष 2021 में किसानों और रिटेलर भाइयों के बीच संबंध को सुविधाजनक बनाने के इरादे से ज्यादा बोटेगा नामक एक प्लेटफॉर्म लॉन्च किया गया इस प्लेटफॉर्म पर ज्यादा कनेक्ट पर मौजूद रिटेलर्स ज्यादा बोटेगा के माध्यम से किसानों से जुड़ सकते हैं और ज्यादा प्रोडक्ट्स की बिक्री को सक्षम कर सकते हैं ये आसपास के किसानों के साथ रिटेलर्स भाइयों का जुड़ाव स्थापित करता है जो उनके रिश्ते को और भी मजबूत बनाता है 2019 में बीस हजार किसानों और डेढ़ सौ खुदरा विक्रेताओं के साथ शुरू हुई यात्रा अब लगभग डेढ़ करोड़ किसानों और चौदह हजार ऐसी अधिक खुदरा विक्रेताओं को जोड़ चुकी है ये स्पष्ट रूप से दिखाता है कि ज्यादा डिजिटल को न केवल रिटेलर भाइयों और किसानों द्वारा समान रूप से स्वीकार किया गया है बल्कि उन्हें खेती से संबंधित मूल्यवान संसाधनों तक पहुंच, फसल 
पोषण से संबंधित समय पर और अमूल्य कृषि सलाह प्रदान करके ज्ञान अंतर को कम करके और स्मार्ट कृषि प्रौद्योगिकियों और समाधानों तक पहुंच प्रदान करके उनकी खेती की यात्रा का एक महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा बन गया है यारा का उद्देश्य न केवल किसानों को फसल उत्पादन में मदद और उन्हें तकनीकी रूप से सहायता कर उनकी जीवन शैली में सुधार करने में है बल्कि रिटेलर्स को भी व्यवसाय विस्तार करने में मदद करना है भविष्य में भी यारा किसानों की आजीविका में सुधार और खुदरा विक्रेताओं की दक्षता बढ़ाने के लिए यारा डिजिटल के माध्यम ऐसी नए और बेहतर तकनीकों को लाने का प्रयास करेगी incredible journey thanks for sharing with me i now request and leave to formally welcome the gathering so yeah. good morning everyone uh, thank you for joining in today I just want to tell you, you this is a lucky day for you guys also, apart from the Indian farmers, uh, because I'm just recovering from a very bad viral attack, so my throat is not as good as it should be. So most likely I will not drone on for an hour, but I will be very very sharp and try to finish off in about seven to eight minutes because after that my voice is really going to conk off. So <coughs> having said that, welcome you all uh, to this launch today. On my way. Uh, I got stuck in the traffic jam, and that meant that I spent some time on Readtrip.com, which is my favorite website. And I read that uh, in quarter three, that has gone by. India has a, has a GDP growth of 8.4 percent, which is quite phenomenal. I think India today is the world's lone shining lighthouse when it comes to economic growth, as it stands today. Then I started thinking that uh, well, India had a much bigger space in the global economy 250 years back, and then till 1700s, India was contributing almost about 25 percent of the global economy, which is incredible. And then we got colonized, and the next 150 years, by the time we got independent, 1947, our uh, contribution to the global economy came down to as low as 4 percent. And that continued for the next 40 years till we liberalised, uh, started the liberalisation movement in 1991. And uh, in the last 35 years, when you think about it, I think India has done a fantastic job in terms of coming out of uh, controlled economy, moving towards a liberalised economy where people are able to invest where they want to, and we see the benefits of that. Today we are the world's in the top five global economy is going to hit $5 trillion in 2025. So far so good. And now, since the spotlight is on us, we are also looking at hitting $10 trillion economy size by 2035, which is fantastic. And that's a fantastic goal to go for. Then I start thinking what is the role going to be Indian agriculture in 2035. That's important for us to see. So where are we when it comes to Indian agriculture today in contribution to the Indian economy? We are having about 43% of the workforce involved in agriculture today. 58% of Indians depend on the livelihood from agriculture. We have one of the largest acreages under agriculture globally and 40 million hectares of that. But we contribute just about 15% to the Indian economy today, which means that we are doing about 480 to 500 billion dollars worth of contribution to the Indian GDP. So if in 2035 we want to be a 10 trillion dollar economy, maintaining our pace at 15 percent contribution, Indian agriculture needs to deliver 1.5 trillion dollars. And that is not going to happen with the business as usual approach that we have. That it will happen also is not going to happen. Because that means that the agriculture economy has to triple in the next 10 years. Not even double. Indian economy will double, but Indian agriculture needs to triple. And uh, that's where 
we need to start looking at the challenges that exist in the Indian agriculture ecosystem. I would not wade into the controversial areas of uh, market access and controls on exports, etc., sector, etc. Sector. That's something which I think the people are better qualified than I am to address. But I think we certainly need to acknowledge that there are certain two, three inherent challenges that Indian agriculture faces. Number one is soil health. In the last 40 years, the soil health in India has really degraded. Like we don't have the nutrient content in the soils is gone. It's not there. The farm company, because they get access to, they're able to sell more of the iron and the zinc and the boron supplements and protein supplements. But I think that is something, if we could provide that through the soil into the crops, we would have a much better, healthier ecosystem in India. That's one part. Second part is, we don't have water. I'm not saying that. Because uh, today we are going through an El Nino uh, event right now as we speak. And, uh, <coughs> but 54% of India is actually, even in a normal monsoon year, is facing water scarcity. And that is something dangerous. When you add both these challenges, water scarcity with uh, soil health or the lack of it, you look at the yields. Indian yields, especially of cereal crops, are almost 50% of global yields, of global levels, especially global leaders like China and Brazil. And that is a bit alarming. And that is something which needs to be fixed. And fixed as of yesterday, otherwise we will not be able to grow enough food to feed ourselves. And also, especially that we it points in the direction of that we are wasting a lot of natural resources that are available in India. We are wasting a lot of, we are putting in more fertilizer than we need, we are putting in more seeds than we need to produce the same ton of grain that China and Brazil are producing. We are using almost twice the amount of resources. And that is where I think an organization like ours, like Yara India comes in. We have the differentiated products, but I think more importantly, we have a wealth of knowledge of almost 115 years since we have been around, operating in 60 countries on the globe, working on the same crop across different agroclimatic conditions. So we have a wealth of knowledge that is available. And that we are making available to the Indian farmers. Now, when you look at the Indian farmers, the challenge is we have 140 million small farmers. It's not easy to knock on each door to deliver knowledge. I'm very proud of the fact that I have in my team 300 commercial economists out there every day. Last year we did close to 40,000 farmer meetings connecting with 1.2 million farmers physically. We have farm care 1.0 way through which we connect almost 4 million farmers. We have a Yara Connect. And, uh, an app which connects us with 15,000 retailers. So all these digital routes are being used to deliver knowledge to the Indian farm. The key is to ensure that knowledge reaches at scale. And that is where FarmPay 2.0 comes in. We are looking at reaching about 25 million farmers by 2027 through the farm gear. And that is where uh, my colleague JP and this and Yash and all our colleagues in the digital economy side, they, they come in with their effort. And on the physical side, our team of 300 sales economists, they go out there delivering their knowledge in the physical as well as a digital group. It will be really a fantastic day if JP, you and I can collect the same gathering on the same day on March of 4th, 2027, and you celebrate 25 million farmers on farm gear. Because that is what is needed to deliver knowledge to the Indian farmers at scale. And if you can do 25 million farmers, I'm telling you the impact that we will have on the GDP contribution from agriculture will be immense. And that is something to live for. Thank you so much. I will step off now. I've done my eight minutes and I think my throat is about to give up. Thank you so much. Thank you so
serve. Your vision and guidance has always served as a great motivation to all of us. Dear team, please join me in welcoming our guest, Shri Siraj Hussain, former Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Food Processing, Government of India. Welcome to the event, sir. Candice Peritus, she is the Vice President of Value Chain Solutions, Yara, Africa and Asia. She has contributed immensely to the success of FarmK 2.0. I now call upon Candice to formally launch the app and deliver a special address on how this app can be used to address the farmer needs. Uh, can I request Vishali and uh, JP to come on the dais, please? Greetings and Namaste everyone. Firstly, thank you very much for this opportunity. And I must say I'm very thrilled and excited to be here today to speak to you all about something that we are very passionate about in Yara. I've been a part of Yara's digital transformation journey for the past three years. And let me tell you, it has been something of continuous growth and innovation. I am honored to introduce to you today one of our key milestones in the latest Farm Care 2.0. But before I get into the details, let me introduce to you Farm Care, with our tagline for the year being Kisan Kasache Ya. And yes, I learned a few Hindi words along the years too. <laughs> All right, and this is a nod to our dedication to supporting our farmers in India. Thank you. Okay, so Farmcare is more than just a mobile solution. It's a tool focused on providing crop nutrition advisory to the farmers. And this is aimed at enhancing their yield, mitigating issues that they have with their soil, so soil health and sustainability. It empowers farmers to plan for their crop and all of their requirements, applying fertilizers at the optimal, optimal times and monitoring nutrition deficiencies, guiding them from sowing to harvest. Now, why is this crucial? Well, because agriculture's success critically depends on time management, risk assessment, and actionable insights. And this is where farm care comes to play. This is something our tool can help with. What we are doing is, we are transforming digital data into usable knowledge, essentially, revolutionizing the way farmers do their craft. In 2019, Yara India Technology Center, which is our ITC, was established in Bangalore, serving as one of the three global hubs. With a team of 190 digital experts, our ITC is at the forefront of developing cutting edge technology, evolving to the needs of our industry. Our digital teams work tirelessly with the research and the development that goes into putting these solutions. Farm care users have access to the latest technology and a suite of tools to help them for their farming needs. Through the Farm Care mobile app, farmers gain access to information that is designed to streamline their operations and maximize their yields. Ladies and gentlemen, Today marks not just the launch of farm care, but a testament to our unwavering dedication to empowering farmers and revolutionizing agriculture through digital innovation. I ask you all to come together to celebrate with us this milestone. And now, I think I too have spoken enough, so through a feature video, I would like to welcome you all to Farm Care 2.0.
enlightening and stimulating. I now invite Viborjin, President Network Governance and CEO of ONDC for the inaugural address of FarmCare to our participants. Good morning everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me and my team out here uh, from ONDC. Uh, first of all, I think the uh, heartiest congratulations to the entire team at Kiara for this amazing launch of Palm K 2.0. Uh, congrats, and I think uh, while Sanjeev ji mentioned 25 million farmers by 2025, uh, 27, uh, I think we'll make it more aggressive the day we join ONDC. So yeah, so let's let's talk about that. Uh, so I think uh, as Sanjeev ji mentioned in the starting address as well, right? Uh, an area contributing almost 15 to 16 percent of the GDP. I think, and I think, uh, as he also mentioned, we need to triple this sort of you know uh, outcome in the next 12 years. I think that's sort of target that the country is looking for. And if you look at the entire value chain from a farm perspective, from an agriculture perspective, right? Whether I look at the input side of agri, if I look at the output side of agri. One of the critical hurdles that we see today is information asymmetry. Right? I think can initiatives like FarmCare are a great stepping stone in terms of resolving that information asymmetry across the value chain. Right? The second and critical component that initiatives like FarmCare also help achieve is to sort of digitally educate the farmer and get get them onto the digital rails. I think that's a very, very important aspect of this entire ecosystem. Right? And I think as he mentioned in this opening address as well, unless we move to those digital rails, uh, it will be very, very difficult for us to achieve the sort of targets he spoke about. right? And I, I really congratulate the entire team at Yara for Palmcare 2.0 because I feel it's a, it's a great stepping stone in terms of achieving that digital enablement of the entire ecosystem, which is a very, very critical component to the country. If I look at some of the real problems out there, right, whether it is in terms of the fragmented value chain, supply chains out there, right, the market access, I think we touched upon the market access issue as well. Uh, that, that's a big, big issue today out there. Credit. Right, uh, and the fact that most of the farmer ecosystem and the farming ecosystem today is not on digital rails, right? They are not on the bureaus. In the absence of any digital trades, it, it acts as a great barrier for them to get any sort of formal financing or credit in, in the entire ecosystem. And I again feel initiatives like FarmCare will, will be the stepping stone for them to create their digital history, digital trades. Uh, which in turn would help them get onto the entire formal financial system, right? So I think these are some of the very uh, important steps that I think initiatives like FarmCare and others uh, will go a long way in, in solving some of those challenges that the entire ecosystem faces today. If I look at things from a government perspective, right, uh, there are numerous initiatives being driven by the government in, in driving this entire ecosystem, right? Uh, from Enam to PM Kisan to you know the entire soil health cards to other initiatives like the digital agri platform. I think there are a lot of these initiatives that are taking place. I think the only thing that concerns me on occasions with some of these multiple platforms coming across, right? Think of the poor farmer, right? Uh, who is anyway digitally not so savvy, but yes, is surrounded by the ecosystem of multiple of these platforms that come up, right? I think that's where we come in, right? That's where the open network for digital commerce comes in. To say, how do we really provide a level playing field? How do we provide a unified access? How do we provide uh, uh, choices to the entire agri ecosystem, which can be more universal in nature? It's not constrained by the boundaries of one platform or two platforms but opens the market in a, in a really fair and transparent manner. And I think, uh, happy to announce that you're working closely with the entire Yari team, uh, uh, Yara team, so to get uh, FarmCare 2.0 onto the network, and I'm told today morning that the launch date is 13th of June 2024, right? 
So I think uh, I invite you all back to this call on the 13th of uh, June and uh, it will be a great opportunity to have uh, Yara and Farmke uh, being live on the network. <laughs> I think the moment you have uh, initiatives like Farmke on the network, Let's understand what happens. What magic can happen if you know you have Farmcare 2.0 on on the on the network? The access goes up multifold, right? Which means that the access to the entire input side ecosystem that Farmcare provides today is not only limited to the users of Farmcare, but to users of multiple other such platforms which might exist in India, right? which means that I could be a user of any other, uh, you know, every application, but still find and, you know, sort of uh, trade in, in Yara products on, on such networks. So it gives me more channels to access the entire, uh, you know, every input ecosystem that Yara brings onto the table. So those are great opportunities for, uh, you know, companies to come on board on the network because it gives a much wider access to people and get okay, choices as well. The second thing is it gives a lot of, uh, it provides a level playing field to the entire ecosystem. What does this really mean? I might be a small retailer selling Yara products in some remote part of the country. Coming onto the network, the entire nation becomes sort of my clientele model. It's the sort of access or the universality of the market access that a network can provide over a platform uh, or an ecosystem of platforms becomes very, very powerful. The third and the most powerful thing, which in my view will be the game changer in really achieving what, you know, uh, Sanjeev spoke about tripling the entire output in the next 12 years is going to be the interface between physical supply chains and the credit value chains or the financial service value chains, whether it's insurance or credit, right? Now, how does that really work? The moment we start getting our farmers onto digital rails, Right? and they have their transaction, transaction histories both in terms of the agri input and the agri output value chains. Those become information collaterals for any financial institution to provide their underlying services using those financial rates. Right? Today what happens, you have asset collaterals which you need to really look at, uh, which obviously given the entire agri ecosystem in India, is, is very difficult to back up on. Right? And therefore, the moment you have information collaterals coming in, which are replacing asset collaterals, that becomes a very, very powerful tool. And I think I would really request Sanjeev Ji and his entire team to really evaluate this as a big focus area, that how can we leverage these information collaterals on Farmcare 2.0 to really empower the, the farmers. So once again, uh, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, I'm looking forward to not only this event, uh, the launch of Farmcare 2.0, but also to 13th of June when Farmcare 2.0 comes onto the ONDC network. Once again, heartiest congratulations to the entire team at Yara and wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Sanjeev to inaugurate a digital campaign, Kisan Ka Sacha Yaar. Nice son. 
ढांचे में है ढल रहा ये नए भारत का किसान है नए दौर के साथ चल रहा मौसम पर पूरी नजर रखता सही समय की खबर रखता एक एक पत्ते का रखे हिसाब अपने एक एक कदम अब सफलता की टकर रखता परिवार में खुशहाली है चेहरे पे सबके लाली है रावी खारिफ या हुसैन सब तरफ हरियाली है खुशहाल फसल जो है कोशिशें सफल जो है साथ ऐसा जो निभाए रिश्ता एक यारी ये अटल जो है Sirat sir to deliver the special address. Thank you very much and uh, congratulations for uh, I think it is not yet an official launch of Farm Care 2.0 am I right That is in June what is there in June then we are integrating with the ONDC platform. Okay, okay. So congratulations to Yara team and also to ONDC for taking Yara on the board. Now, uh, I think I do not know the profile of the participants, but I think what I'm going to say will relate to what you think about fertilizer in general and urea in particular. Uh, you see, uh, Reforms in any sector are difficult to carry out and we have seen over the last uh, 30 years, especially since 1991, that uh, they have come gradually and uh, agriculture uh, is still to uh, taste the full might of the reform process. In fact, uh, last couple of days have been quite awkward for the fertilizer sector uh, because uh, in case of uh, nutrient based subsidy fertilizers we have gone back to a regime where now the fertilizer companies making DAP or MOP etc which were supposed to be supposed to have been decontrolled now they have to submit all their books of accounts to the government Ministry of Fertilizer my colleagues in the ministry would be quite happy and uh, the return to the fertilizer companies cannot exceed more than 8 to 12 percent this was the regime uh, which used to stifle the urea sector and for very long years uh, urea manufacturers have been uh, persuading the government several government government committees have been constituted to reduce the interface with the government but um, instead of urea now others are also in the same boat so um, uh, that that if i may say so is um, in a way going backward and it is not only in case of uh, fertilizers that this has happened and i have written about it it has also happened in case of sugar you know in 2000 uh, i think it was 2013 I was still in the Kishi Bhavan when the government decided that uh, sugar cane, that sugar will not be supplied through PDS by the central government through a levy route. You know, earlier the, all the sugar mills had to supply a certain percentage to the government at a very low price, and that sugar was distributed through the public distribution system at highly subsidized rate. So the government of India said there will be no levy mills are free to sell their entire quantity at whatever the market price they can realize and if any state government wants, wants to uh, supply sugar under PDS they can buy directly from the sugar mills the government of India subsidy would be limited to a certain extent not only that the government also decided that Sugar mills are free to sell to anyone, free to sell any time to anyone, free to sell any quantity to anyone. So the sugar mills 
did not require to come to Krishi Bhavan for any monthly quota. But I am sure you would be aware that we have gone back on this also. And now how much a sugar mill can sell is decided by Krishi Bhavan. In which month, so we are in March, how much can a sugar factory sell in the month of March, sell in the Indian market, is decided by the government. How much a sugar mill could export was also decided by the government. Of course, now the exports have been banned. And there are other regulations on ethan also, also which, you have, which you may have been reading. I have written enough about it. And I personally uh, do not think that we have um, sufficient surplus to divert uh, the grains for ethanol, but that is not the subject of today's discussion. But you must read, since you are in agriculture sector, you must make yourself aware. Now, we are lucky that the global prices have come down. I do not know if Yara also imports. Do you import, sir? Urea? No. no? But so others may be importing. No, but I thought maybe a part of it, part of your supply, you, you may be importing. So you are not importing, so that way. Uh, you are good. In fact, uh, uh, you know, it was very, very worrying that urea prices had risen to $1,050 a ton in April 2022. Of course, now they are down to 380 In fact, they have gone up a little bit in the last few months. They came down and then they have gone up. So, it is good that the prices have come down and it is a good news for the government because the subsidy bill of the government um, will go down. And you have seen the impact of that in the Q3 results, you know, about which everybody is going to go. So one reason why you have good result, Q3 result, is because the outgoing subsidy is likely to be lower rate than what was anticipated. Now, what your company and other fertilizer companies have to be doing, uh, the government has done its bit by I was still in the Ministry of Agriculture when neem coating was made mandatory and it was after my retirement that the quantity in a bag was reduced from 50 kg to 45 kg. The whole idea is to somehow reduce the overuse of urea as a fertilizer. Now we know the reason that urea is much more subsidized than other fertilizers and therefore uh, the farmers, for a variety of economic reasons, apply urea rather than other fertilizers. And uh, we have not been able to find a way, the government has not been find, able to find a way to uh, bring urea prices to the market level. And for that, I have written on this also, for that the basic and the most difficult task before the government is about one third of land is under tenancy in Andhra Pradesh, official data. In other states, the official data says it is 10%. But those of you who work with the farmers, especially even in Punjab and Haryana know that the actual level of tenancy is much higher. So if the urea subsidy and other fertilizer subsidies are distributed directly, as the economists have been pursuing for decades, then there is a fear, and Dr. Ramesh Chan, member of Niti Aayog, has written about it. There is a fear that those who are actually cultivating and growing crops may not use enough fertilizer, enough urea, and because of that, the productivity will go down. So, this is a conundrum which is yet to be resolved, and for any direct transfer of fertilizer subsidy, because that only will bring balance to the use of fertilizer. Once all the fertilizers are at market rate and the farmer gets his amount in cash, farmer here means not only the person who is having land in his name, but also the person who is actually cultivating, which is not easy as I said. So then the use will become more balanced and for all you know, uh, natural farming may get an even larger audience in Andhra Pradesh. For example, uh, a large experiment on natural farming is going and it is claimed 
not yet fully understood or explained scientifically that the productivity does not really go down. So, you know, a friend of mine, Mr. Jugal Mohapatra, who was secretary fertilizer, a colleague of mine, uh, we keep discussing. I talked to him this morning also. If he has a message for Yara. So the thing is that uh, somehow he had sensed it in the very beginning, around 2014-15 itself, that a reform of urea subsidy regime is not going to be easy. And 10 years hence, we now know that uh, we have rather moved in the other direction by bringing, uh, you know, this control regime to NBS uh, fertilizers also. So which means, finally, that companies like you have to educate the farmers about the optimum use of urea, have to educate the farmers about the fact that only one third of urea applied by him goes to the plant, two third goes to the air or water or whatever, leaching, this, that and the other which has its own negative consequences. So maybe your app will take care of this also. And I hope that uh, because of your presence, close presence with the farmers, you will be able to actually make use of the soil testing data and recommend an optimum quantity and time and method of applying fertilizer, uh, not only urea but also other fertilizers so that our productivity can go up. Urea, uh, you know, nitrogen use efficiency has also gone down uh, and I do not know why our nitrogen use efficiency is lower than other countries. So maybe I have, you have to, Mr. Kamar has, has to invite me to more similar sessions so that I become aware of this. Uh, but you know, one good thing about such invitations is that we get to read and we get to read about the sector. So um, even though uh, I may not cover everything which I have read, uh, but I'm happy that uh, I was invited. And um, when I was in Ikria, you know, we had compared the urea prices in our neighborhood. And we know that we are about the cheapest as compared to our neighborhood. And uh, there is also um, a wrong impression created by media as if this fertilizer subsidy, uh, you know, is enjoyed by the farmer. So basically, maybe your app should also clarify by some method that this is a subsidy which is being used by everyone as a consumer because this keeps the price of agricultural produce low and, and therefore, uh, you know, people can afford food. So I think I'll stop there. Uh, the point I am making is that uh, reform process does not go only in one direction. So in case of sugar and in case of fertilizer, we have seen that reform process also goes in the other direction. So thank you very much sir for inviting me and hope to continue. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. sir. May I now request Celia for Secretary Royal Norwegian Embassy to say a few words on this occasion. Thank you. And good afternoon and namaste everyone. I am uh, very happy to be here today to support the launch of uh, Yara's digital campaign and the 2.0 version of your farm care app. And thank you for the excellent presentation so far, and also congratulations to the entire Yara team on launching this in 300 locations at the same time. That is very great indeed. So um, it's really impressive to see how Yara as a company is focusing on continuous improvement of your services to be able to better serve your target group. And the app that you have developed uh, now with new and smart features is a great tool to help Indian farmers to improve their yield while maintaining soil health and ensure sustainability. And I know that it's been used by several million people already, uh, but India is large and diverse 
And it's encouraging to see that you've added also new languages so that you're uh, able to reach an even broader audience with your tool. And I think this will help you to reach your goal of uh, engaging with 25 million farmers before 2027. So I would like to take this opportunity today to talk about some of the broader impact that the focus on digitalization, on agri-tech and sustainability will have uh, on the future of agriculture. And as the Norwegian government owns more than a third of Yara and is its largest shareholder, it's great to see that your objectives uh, in India also align with our government priorities. So these priorities are, of course, to enhance food security, to ensure sustainable farming practices, to adapt to climate change, and to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, um, promoting better food and land use practices towards a healthy diet for a growing population in India is something that the Norwegian government has supported through various Indian partners for many years. And it's also a big priority in Norway's bilateral cooperation with India. And uh, some of the projects we have supported have demonstrated that climate resilience of small farmers can be built by adopting sustainable agriculture practices. And I'm also very glad to see that a Norwegian company such as Yara has a very large scale activity in India, both on the production and manufacturing side, but also, more importantly, on promoting digitalization and sustainable practices for farming communities. So, as you may know, the, the Norwegian agriculture sector is quite different from the Indian agriculture sector. Just in some figures, um, only 3% of Norway's total land area is farmed, compared to 42% for India. Uh, and agriculture accounted for 0.6% of Norway's total national gross product, compared to at least 20% for India. And the agriculture sector employed 1.7% of the employed persons in Norway compared to 45% in India. So it, there's a, quite a big difference. Norway is a small country and India is a large one. But the challenges we face with agriculture and the agricultural sector are similar. So, you know, uh, climate change, conflict, pandemic, all of these things uh, are, are big threats to food security and they affect us all. And we need to mitigate these through uh, smart te technology and through digital in innovation. And then lastly, I want to, to uh, mention something that's also very close to my heart. And you know, this week is the week of International Women's Day. So um, let me therefore finish this speech by highlighting a very important fact. Um, and that is that uh, women small-scale farmers are far more severely affected by climate change and other threats due to differences in their socially constructed roles and responsibilities. And I've read that there are approximately 10 million women farmers in India and women constitute a big and very important group for Indian agriculture. And one uh, report has stated that women contribute over 70% of the workforce engaged in certain agricultural sectors. So women are potential agents of change for better nutrition, for sustainable development of the agricultural sector. And therefore, it's really imperative to address women's knowledge and strengthen their participation in the agriculture sector through social and economic empowerment and through access to technology, finance and information. So it's great to hear that Yara is working very closely on this issue, collaborating with women farmers, uh, across your customers, business partners, and the local communities, both on general empowerment, but also through making available digital tools, such as the Farm Care app. And digitalization and smart agriculture is really the future, and you are contributing to this. So with that, thank you for inviting me to this app launch. Uh, part of the core mandate of the Norwegian Embassy is to support Norwegian businesses in India. And therefore, I'm very happy to be present here today 
to show our support for what Yara is trying to achieve in India. And I wish you the best of luck with your very important mission. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, may I now request Sanjeev to present the memento to our distinguished guest as a token of appreciation. Vishali, Head Public Affairs Communication, to come and present the vote of thanks and bring this event to a meaningful conclusion. So I'd like to first thank all the participants who have joined us online. Uh, we have more than 300 locations which are connecting to us virtually today. And uh, they are the ones who will actually make it happen. So Farm Care 2.0, success would be in their hands. So thank you so much for joining and uh, also being present for the occasion today. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Sirat sir for being here uh, and sparing time for his very packed schedule. And uh, also his insightful thoughts on the policies. And so we had planned for this event in Muradabad earlier and also we were planning to have a follow-up uh, meeting with user farmers which could not happen. But I am uh, taking this on me, we will take you to some of the user farmers and we will also talk about what Yara does on productivity. Apart from Yudia there are some more areas which we work on and we will definitely take you to that. Uh, I will get back to you on that. I also would like to thank Vibhor and Deepak for joining uh, us from ONDC and really look forward to the integration of Farm Connect with ONDC platform and I'm sure that it will be, a, a, it will be very uh, good opportunity for all our YCNC partners and our retail partners to leverage on the Connect which um, the ONDC platform will offer and the network which it will offer. Uh, and also look forward to that integration very soon in June. Uh, and uh, uh, also special thanks to Celia 
who is representing the Norwegian Embassy here today. And uh, Celia, also to reiterate on the fact you had some very good statistics to present. Uh, also, Yara in India is very much committed to uh, you know, have our uh, actually strengthen our position in the digital in Indian farm ecosystem, not just agriculture but the entire value chain. And we are also, uh, no, we actually stand by our mission, which is vision grow, the knowledge grows. And we not only want to you know, incrementally increase our presence, but exponentially grow, as was mentioned by Sanjeev. Uh, so, I, and we also believe that digital is the only means for it. So, we are committed to that and we would uh, do it going forward. And uh, in the end, I would also like to thank the host, Candice and JP. Uh, Candice, especially you, because you've traveled from Singapore and shown your solidarity when we were launching this app. And I know that there were, there's been a lot of planning which has gone into it. Uh, also, the hard work of the entire team. Uh, I think we should put a hand together for the entire organizing team. I may not remember all the names, but starting from uh, Rohan, Neha, um, Punacha, then we had um, Vanisha, Ekta, Abhishek, uh, and I may be missing few names, but um, Gaurav, and a lot of them. So actually the organizing team has been working on it, not just for today's event, but they were equally occupied and working for the, the first uh, date which we had planned, 14 February. So they have uh, been working across 14 to today and they have been you know, very instrumental in putting this show together. So thanks to all of you and also all the participants for patient hearing. Uh, I think with this we can close the event and uh, you're all welcome for uh, lunch in the adjoining hall. Thank you so much.